Have you ever imagined a world where sound can control matter, where massive stones can float in midair with just a chant? Do you believe that ancient secrets about building the pyramids and the mysterious flying machines of ancient India used sound for construction and propulsion? How could a small man build a coral stone castle weighing tens of tons without any modern equipment? And if music can truly control the human mind, are we unknowingly being manipulated by the sound frequencies around us? In a world where advanced science and ancient myths intertwine, have we truly understood the power of sound and the unexplored mysteries of the universe? Today, we will explore these mysteries together. Are you ready? Before we begin, support us in just three quick seconds by hitting like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Now, let's dive in. The Mystery of Ancient Indian Aerospace Technology Using Sound to Generate Propulsion At the beginning of the 20th century, as ancient secrets of India began to surface, a particularly extraordinary event sparked the curiosity of scientists and historians alike. In a mystical context of spiritual exploration, the scholar Pandit Subaraya Shastri unveiled a document that sent shockwaves through both the spiritual and scientific communities. It was the Vaimanika Shastra, a remarkable technical manuscript detailing ancient India's aerospace technology. The Vaimanika Shastra is not an ordinary religious scripture, but a treasure trove of detailed information about the Vimana the mysterious flying machines of ancient India. This manuscript, attributed to the sage Maharishi Bharadwaja, who is said to have lived around 3,000 years ago, provides astonishing details on the materials used, construction methods, pilot training, specialized clothing, dietary regimes for the crew, flight regulations, and even the operational environment of the Vimana. According to descriptions in the Vaimanika Shastra, the Vimana was a type of flying craft with extraordinary capabilities far beyond the imagination of modern humans. They could appear and disappear at will, had lightning protection, stealth technology, superior wind resistance, and could travel anywhere on Earth or even to other worlds. These descriptions evoke comparisons with the most advanced technologies in today's aerospace industry. The influence of Vimana extends beyond this ancient manuscript and has been depicted in Indian culture for centuries. In the temple city of Kanchipuram, among its 424 temples, many not only honor deities such as Shiva and Rama, but also preserve stone frescoes depicting Vimanas. This highlights the significance and prevalence of Vimanas in the consciousness of ancient Indian society. In the treasure trove of Indian literature, the epic Ramayana, one of the greatest works, also mentions Vimanas as an integral part of Prince Rama's adventure. The story, believed to have taken place approximately 880,000 years ago, describes fierce aerial battles between Rama and his enemies, using flying Vimana war chariots. These machines were said to carry dozens to hundreds of people with a maximum speed of up to 5,800 kilometers per hour, 4.7 times the speed of sound, far surpassing the capabilities of most modern aircraft. What is particularly noteworthy is that the Vaimanika Shastra does not merely describe Vimanas in general terms, but also provides detailed technical specifications and design diagrams, a rarity among ancient documents. The manuscript even mentions a special engine that uses sound to generate propulsion. While this might seem unbelievable, it's fascinating to note that the Bible also contains a story about the use of sound to destroy a city. The Destruction of Jericho Between Myth and Science In the mystical pages of human history, there exists a legendary tale that has captivated generations for thousands of years the mysterious fall of Jericho. This story, deeply embedded in the Old Testament of the Bible, is not only a pivotal chapter in religious history, but also a profound scientific mystery. 
what truly happened? Was it a miracle, or does it conceal a scientific secret that remains undiscovered? According to the Bible, the story begins with the great exodus of the Jews from Egypt, led by Moses. After Moses passed away, Joshua took over the leadership, guiding the Israelites into the promised land of Canaan. But before they could claim this land, they had to face an impossible challenge, conquering Jericho, a fortress deemed impregnable. Jericho was no ordinary city. It was the gateway to Canaan, fortified with massive defenses. The towering walls consisted of two layers. The outer wall was twenty feet thick, while the inner wall was forty feet thick, with a forty-foot gap between them. Warriors stood guard on these walls, ready to spot and repel any attack. How could such an impenetrable fortress be defeated by faith alone? Yet something miraculous did happen. Following God's command, Joshua was given a highly unconventional battle plan. Instead of using military force, the Israelites were instructed to carry the Ark of the Covenant, a sacred artifact of the Israelite people, and march around the walls of Jericho. The Ark of the Covenant, measuring approximately 44 inches by 27 inches by 27 inches, was made of acacia wood covered in gold, with two cherubim on its lid. It was said to contain divine power. The attack unfolded over seven days. Each day the Israelite army silently marched around the city once, led by seven priests blowing trumpets before the ark. Not a single word was spoken, only the sound of trumpets echoed through the air. On the seventh day, after marching around the city seven times, the priests sounded their trumpets, and in unison the people of Israel shouted with all their might. And then, the unthinkable happened. According to the Bible, the mighty, unyielding walls of Jericho suddenly collapsed. The Israelite army stormed in and seized the city. This story has become one of the most famous legends in the Bible, sparking the question, what really happened? How could such a massive, fortified city crumble merely from sound? Was it divine intervention, or was there a hidden scientific explanation? Scholars have long debated the truth behind this event. Some argue it's purely a religious myth, while others have proposed fascinating scientific theories. One hypothesis suggests that the trumpets and the people shouting might have produced a resonant frequency that matched the natural frequency of the city's walls and construction materials. And perhaps the Ark of the Covenant, with its unknown secrets, amplified this effect creating a force powerful enough to bring down the walls. Whatever the truth may be, the fall of Jericho remains an enthralling mystery, challenging us to question the incredible potential of sound, faith, and the unknown. It is not just a religious tale, but also a beckoning invitation to science and human curiosity. Could there be hidden powers in sound that we have yet to discover? Let's explore for Jericho might just be the beginning. The Fascinating Power of Sound, Real-World Evidence One day in 1967, Swiss scientist Hans Jenny embarked on an experiment that would be repeated countless times. He sprinkled a small handful of quartz sand onto a black drum membrane measuring 60 centimeters across, then turned on music beneath it. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. As the tone shifted, the grains of quartz sand automatically arranged themselves into various patterns, creating a mesmerizing display. Jenny believed that this phenomenon occurred because sound waves could resonate with substances like water, electricity, and sand particles. The quartz sand on the drum became a medium through which sound waves were visualized turning the invisible world of sound into something visible. From this, a new science was born, the science of visualizing sound, known as cymatics. But this experiment didn't begin with Jenny. It dates back to Ernst Kladny, a German physicist often regarded as the father of acoustics. His original experiment, called the Kladny plate experiment, created patterns now referred to as Kladny figures. 
Nearly two centuries later, Jenny, a devoted admirer of Cladney's work, expanded on the experiment and coined the term cymatics. The term cymatics comes from the Greek word for wave. Jenny theorized that everything in existence has its own frequency, even the cells and organs in the human body. He suggested that when sound and the human body resonate together, music could have healing effects. For instance, soft music might slow down the heart rate, helping people to calm down and achieve balance. Jenny didn't stop with just sand. He experimented with various materials and found that each substance created its own unique pattern when vibrated. As the frequency of the sound waves increased, the physical images produced by these waves grew increasingly complex and intricate. Could this mean that higher frequencies open the door to deeper mysteries of existence? One day, Jenny played the sound of Om, the first syllable in the six sacred syllables of Tibetan Buddhism, and the resulting image on the drum membrane closely resembled a mandala. In Sanskrit, mandala means circle or center, and is regarded in Buddhism as a symbol of balance, harmony, and a microcosm of both the universe and the self. Could this ancient sound truly represent a universal code that ties everything together? Today, Cladney's experiment has moved beyond the confines of the lab. Science enthusiasts worldwide have successfully recreated it and shared their results on platforms like YouTube. One of the most captivating examples comes from Nigel Stanford, a New Zealand musician, who brilliantly combined speaker vibrations and camera frame rates to create a dazzling audio-visual performance. What if sound could be seen and music could become visible in ways we never thought possible? In the early 21st century, British physicist John Stuart Reed and his team optimized the technology to visualize sound further. They used ultra-pure water as the medium, which allowed their device to capture more dynamic sound waves. Reed named this device the Cymoscope. With this groundbreaking tool, Reed opened up a whole new frontier in acoustic science. Just as the microscope and telescope once unveiled the microscopic world and the universe to humanity, could the cymoscope be the key to unlocking the mysteries hidden in sound? In 2009, the Dolphin Language Research Group Speak Dolphin partnered with Reed to collect dolphin ultrasound waves and input them into the cymoscope. The result was a striking image of researcher Jim McDonough, allowing us, for the first time, to decipher the encoded language of dolphins. Could cymatics help us finally bridge the gap between species, unlocking communication with the most intelligent creatures of the sea? In 2018, British digital sound scholar Ryan Stables provided Reed with ultrasonic Raman signals from healthy and cancerous brain cells. The cymoscope revealed that healthy cells displayed symmetrical and orderly structures, while cancerous cells appeared disordered and irregular. This discovery opened the door to potential cymatic applications in medicine, helping doctors distinguish between healthy and cancerous cells during surgery. Could this be the beginning of non-invasive medical diagnostics through sound? From simple experiments with quartz sand to advanced applications in marine biology and medicine, cymatics has unlocked a new dimension of understanding, allowing us to see sound in ways we never could before. The alluring power of sound lies not only in its ability to create mesmerizing visuals, but also in its vast potential for practical applications across countless fields of science and life. What if sound holds secrets we've only begun to uncover? What hidden truths lie in the vibrations all around us? The world of sound is waiting to be explored, and it may be more profound and powerful than we ever imagined. Are you ready to listen? Building the Pyramids, the Mystery of Ancient Technology in the 10th century A.D., a strange tale about the construction of the pyramids was recounted by an old Egyptian priest, challenging everything we believe about ancient technology. The Arab historian Al-Masudi 
during his travels to this mystical land, recorded a shocking secret that could completely reshape how we view the building of these grand monuments. According to the priest's story, the pyramids weren't constructed by sheer human labor as we commonly imagine. Instead, a mysterious technique known as the levitation of stones was used. If this method is accurately described, it would upend our understanding of the ancient world's technological capabilities. Here's how the process was described. First, workers placed a special material made from papyrus under each corner of the massive stone blocks. Then they used a special metal rod to tap the four corners of the stone. As the rod made contact with the stone, a sharp ringing sound was heard, and something incredible happened. The stone began to rise into the air, hovering at a certain height. By continuing to tap with the rod, the workers could control the stone's movement, guiding it to the desired position. Other workers would check the angle and alignment, and if needed, the tapping process would continue until the stone was perfectly placed. This story completely shatters the familiar image of pyramid construction. Instead of the grueling scene of hundreds of thousands of slaves toiling under the lash, using pulleys and levers to move stones, we are introduced to a nearly magical method, where advanced technology and craftsmanship worked in harmony to create these colossal wonders. What makes this tale even more intriguing is its potential connection to modern theories about the existence of advanced civilizations in the distant past. If you've seen my video titled Are Giants Actually Real? and then combine that with theories about sound-based construction technologies, it's possible to imagine that these giant builders possessed superior technology. With immense power and advanced knowledge, constructing towering pyramids hundreds of feet high might have been much easier and far more achievable than we ever thought. What do you think? Could this be the missing link in the mystery of the pyramids? What if ancient civilizations had knowledge and tools far beyond what we can comprehend today? Could sound, energy, and technology have played a role in these architectural feats? The mystery deepens, inviting us to keep searching for answers. The Coral Castle Mystery a love story and ancient technology. In Florida, USA, stands an enigmatic architectural wonder called Coral Castle, a megalithic marvel that has baffled and amazed visitors for decades. The origin and construction of this structure evoke the same awe and mystery that surrounds the building of the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Coral Castle is located just south of Miami and consists of over 200 massive coral stone blocks with the heaviest weighing a staggering 58 tons. The most astonishing fact? The entire structure, from quarrying to carving, transporting to building, was completed by just one man, Edward Leeds Kalnan. Born in 1887 in Riga, Latvia, Edward's tale begins with a beautiful yet heart-wrenching love story. The night before his wedding, his fiancée left him, shattering his heart. Devastated, Edward left his homeland for America, where he vowed to build a castle of love out of coral stone, in memory of the love he had lost. He began his monumental task in 1920, and it took him 20 years to complete. Coral Castle is home to incredible architectural feats, including a 30-ton coral astronomical telescope that points precisely to the North Star. There's also a 9-ton door, so finely balanced that a single finger can rotate it. Perhaps most striking of all is a heart-shaped stone table weighing over two tons, believed to represent the largest heart in the world, a poignant symbol of Edward's unshakable love. But the greatest mystery of all lies in how Edward, a man standing only five feet tall and weighing just 100 pounds, was able to build this enormous structure entirely on his own. When he passed away in 1951, investigators found only a few primitive tools in his workshop, simple wooden poles and iron chisels. Neighbors recall that Edward often worked at night, illuminated only by a lantern, 
No one ever saw how he managed to move those gigantic stones. Once a passerby claimed to have seen Edward placing his hands on a stone and singing to it, as if the sound itself made the rock lighter. In his notes, Edward wrote, I have discovered the secret of the pyramids. I know how the ancient Egyptians, the builders of Peru, the architects of Uganda, and those in Asia moved and positioned massive stones with the most basic tools. The Coral Castle mystery draws us into a world of hidden knowledge and untold secrets, much like the tales of stone levitation used in the construction of the pyramids. Could it be that Edward had tapped into an ancient secret about controlling and moving stone? Perhaps the key lies in sound and vibration as hinted by his singing to the stones. What do you think? Could Edward's discovery be the missing link to unlocking the techniques of the ancient builders? Did he uncover an ancient power that allowed him to defy gravity and create one of the most mysterious structures in modern history? The mystery of Coral Castle invites us to keep searching, to dig deeper, and to question everything we think we know about the secrets of the ancients. Acoustic Levitation the mystical power of sound waves. In today's tech-driven world, we're all familiar with futuristic transportation systems like maglev trains, which use magnetic levitation to defy gravity. But there's another technology that can make objects hover in mid-air, one far less known yet equally fascinating, acoustic levitation. Acoustic levitation uses sound waves to lift and suspend objects in the air, Unlike magnetic levitation, acoustic levitation doesn't require complex materials, and it offers incredible stability. What's even more remarkable is how this technology was discovered, entirely by accident. In 1866, August Kunt, a 27-year-old German physicist, was conducting experiments on the speed of sound. During his research, he stumbled upon something astonishing, in a sound tube, dust particles began to float and move in an orderly pattern, as if defying gravity. This marked the first recorded observation of acoustic levitation. However, it wasn't until 1934, over half a century later, that Canadian physicist Louis Vesso King finally explained the science behind this mysterious phenomenon. He revealed that acoustic levitation results from a non-linear effect that occurs in high-intensity sound environments. The basic principle is that standing sound waves interact with objects to create an upward force strong enough to counteract gravity. The simplest acoustic levitation device consists of a sound emitter at the top and a reflector at the bottom. Sound waves travel from the emitter to the reflector, bouncing back to create stable standing waves when the distance between the two is a multiple of the sound's wavelength. In this standing wave, specific points called nodes, where sound pressure is zero, and anti-nodes, where sound pressure is strongest form. When a small object, like a droplet of water or a lightweight particle, is placed just below a node, the upward pressure from the sound waves balances the object's weight, causing it to hover magically in midair. This is the core principle of acoustic levitation. Over the past century, acoustic levitation has evolved into a refined technology with numerous critical applications. In space research, it simulates the effects of zero gravity. In industrial processes, it aids in the melting of metals with extreme purity. And in biochemical research, acoustic levitation allows for precise manipulation of microscopic samples free from the interference of containers. But despite its many advantages, acoustic levitation faces a significant limitation. It can only lift objects smaller than half the wavelength of the sound waves and of limited mass. This makes the exciting idea of ancient civilizations using acoustic levitation to transport massive stones for the Great Pyramids still a subject of fascinating speculation, but not grounded in reality. Or is it? While it might seem far-fetched for now, acoustic levitation continues to develop, holding the potential for groundbreaking future applications. 
Could this ancient-sounding technology be key to some of the world's biggest mysteries? And how far will it go in transforming our understanding of sound, vibration, and the very forces that govern our world? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain. The future of acoustic levitation is sure to keep us wondering and wanting more. The Mysterious Sounds of Crop Circles and the Power of Music in 1989, something remarkable happened in the rural fields of England. Colin Andrews, the man who coined the term crop circles, led an extensive investigation to uncover the origins of these mysterious formations. The investigation, named Operation White Crow, took place over 10 days in the fields near Winchester, Hampshire. While the team didn't catch anyone in the act of creating the crop circles, they did record strange sounds late at night. When these recordings were analyzed at NASA's laboratory in Pasadena, California, experts came to a surprising conclusion. The sounds weren't from animals or insects. They resembled mechanical tones in the range of 5,000 to 5,200 hertz. This discovery sparked a theory. Could crop circles be formed by special sound waves? Could these frequencies interact with the plants, causing them to bend and form intricate patterns? This idea echoes the famous Cladney experiments, where various shapes emerged from sand or dust under different sound frequencies. Witnesses often reported hearing eerie sounds, described as a humming blend of cicadas and waterfalls, before and after the crop circles appeared. Could sound be the key to unlocking the mystery of crop circles? Nikola Tesla once said, If you want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Indeed, sound, produced by vibrations at different frequencies, holds immense and diverse power. It can be a work of art, an advanced technology, or an enigmatic force that piques human curiosity. But perhaps most importantly, sound is a powerful medium for emotions. A poignant example of the emotional power of music comes from World War II. In 1944, during the Battle of Caen, a German sniper had taken the lives of 40 British soldiers. As he aimed at his final target, a British soldier, something unexpected happened. Instead of returning fire, the British soldier pulled out a harmonica and played the Irish folk tune Danny Boy. The melody, filled with longing and heartbreak, stirred something deep in the sniper, a reminder of family, of home, and of the newborn child waiting for him. To everyone's surprise, the German sniper responded with his own instrument, playing a similarly haunting tune on his flute. In that fleeting moment, the music transcended the battlefield. It awakened the sniper's deepest emotions, reminding him that there were things far more important than war, love, family, and the desire for peace. In the end, the sniper lowered his weapon and both men survived. This story illustrates the incredible power of music. It's been called the cheapest medicine in the world, breaking down language barriers and bringing people together in ways that words alone cannot. But it also serves as a reminder that music can be a tool of mind control when used manipulatively. So, what is it about sound that can stir us so deeply or create patterns in the fields overnight? Could it be the key to ancient mysteries? Or does it hold even deeper truths waiting to be discovered? One thing is for certain. Sound, whether through music or mystery, has an undeniable power that continues to fascinate and captivate us all.